Hello and welcome to Siege of Dungeon. This is a dungeon crawler roguelite experience and it has just released out into Steam Early Access. If you'd like to check it out, there is a link in the description. Let us start a new game almost immediately right here. And uh, let's take a look and see what we can do. All right, so we have the ability to choose. This is the first time I'm actually playing this, by the way, because I really love having a fresh perspective on things when I first start recording. So I get to experience every, th every single thing for the first time alongside you. Anyway, we have the ability to choose Samurai, Archer, Mage, and Priest. I think I'm probably going to go for Samurai, Mage, Priest. That sounds like a pretty decent team. Samurai is going to be our tank, Mage will be our damage, and Priest will be our healer. I'm going to assume is the healer, right? Yeah. Heals people. Fireball. Yeah. Sounds pretty fun. We also got uh, Flurry, Slam, Sudden Slash, and all that wonderful stuff. Okay, yeah, that sounds great. Also, you can split up in this game if you want to. You don't have to stay with all of your party. You can actually cover more ground by splitting your characters in different directions, which is obviously a bit of a strategic choice. For me personally, I'm probably, for the, f for the first couple of explorations that we do, I'm probably just going to stay together just to make sure we stay alive for a little bit longer than two seconds. But yeah, anyway. <laughs> there you are. A challenger, clueless of true desperation. <clears throat> uh, pardon my impoliteness. Thanks for coming all this way here. You must have a good reason for coming all this way. Your soul. I smell great potential dwelling within your soul. I will offer you my assistance in the dungeon. I can offer you greater power in exchange for the soul that you collected on your journey. <laughs> How far deep you can reach within the limited time is completely up to you. All right, so in other words, we've got to try and collect as much resource, as much currency as possible to be able to use it at this guy. And then uh, I, I guess we're going to gain some power. We're going to gain some power and some benefits from that. Anyway, gain one additional use of revive. All your characters gain five max HP. I don't actually know how much HP we have. Uh, I think we have about 30-ish, 20 to 30 or something like that. So five max HP kind of, could, could be kind of good. Also gained five relic fragments. I don't know what that is. So I'm going to take the relic fragments because I don't know what that is, obviously. I think that might be kind of cool. As you can see, look at the dungeon map right there. We're going into the settlement of goblins first. And now we can choose a relic for one of our characters here. So you can see here, we have the Bushi Helmet, the Scroll of Weakening, and the Guardian Pauldrons. When Priest uses no attack and damaging skills, all your characters gain attack and magic attack and reduce damage taken by one before his next action. That sounds like a really powerful ability, to be honest. I'm actually going to take Guardian Pauldrons. We can also choose another relic, which is Universal now. At the beginning of your turn, gain two armor. Deal two damage to a random en enemy every time your characters gain armor. What? Okay, that's actually super powerful. A each critical hit heals for two HP. Going to go for the Iron Sand, I think. That sounds really, really good. Okay, so the character will start moving after choosing move. Every movement costs one movement point. The character can keep moving until they run out of movement points. Besides, you can choose skip turn to make the character remain where they are. Okay, you can keep moving. Okay, okay, okay. Once all characters have ended their turns, one hour will pass in the dungeon. The characters can then start their turns anew. Your goal is to find and conquer the boss rooms on every floor until you defeat the eco boss on the final floor. In addition, you can only stay in an eco area for a certain length of time. Be sure to explore with caution. When moving, use collective action to move nearby teammates with you. Aha! Collective action? Okay. Uh, where, is, where is collective action? I have no idea where that is. I will. Whatever the case. Aha! Wait a minute. Ah, there is collective action. So we can actually move all of our people at once. And now we can go over here to this this battle i suppose so let's actually we can move these two here i guess and then we'll do we're gonna do collective action we can do can we actually move both of these here i'm actually gonna just do this i want to move them yeah there we go okay so that's actually really nice and now we can do collective action and then we can move all of them down here right is that is that, is that gonna work is that actually gonna work N no just one of them moves Okay, oh no, wait, no, no, they're all moving. Okay, so that's good. Right, yeah, so I'm perfectly happy to enter this battle with all three. Please, please let it be all three because I don't want to don't fight a goblin by, by myself. Yes, anyway, you gain one BP at the beginning of turns. Burst skills with reinforced skill effects cost two BP without spending any mana. Remember to use BP frequently. 
during battles. Okay, what I, I don't battle points like I assume they stand for or something like that. Battle points. Okay, so technically what we can do now is we can take we can do a little bit of a defensive or we can attack. I think we're gonna do defense because we do have that relic that actually deals damage. So I'm thinking that that's pretty cool. She has 17 mana, so that's actually pretty good. Three damage. Okay, I'm going to use a skill right here. We're going to use Fireball. That's going to do 10 damage. I think that's pretty decent. Oh, we also inflicted a burn. That's quite nice. And we can also use a skill here. And how much do we actually heal for? We heal for 8 HP. That's pretty good. Okay, well, we're just going to be attacking a single target right here. Don't really need to do anything more. And the goblin is now going to get to attack. Oh, nice. Perfect block. Okay, that's wonderful. So generally what we could do is we could just defend um, almost all the time here. And we, as long as it doesn't actually attack any of our other friends, as long as it just attacks the samurai, we shouldn't have any issues. Because it seems to only do four damage. At least that's what I can see. Yes, as you can see, it just completely negates everything. We can actually use... Um, wait a minute. We can use these things. Okay, so you can see here that there are actually alternate abilities that do not consume MP and they use BP instead. So for example, I could have literally used BP in the previous turn to do Slashing Strike and I could have killed this goblin extremely fast. But of course I didn't do that because I'm a bit of an imbecile. And I'm learning, you know, I'm learning how to play the game. So do bear that in mind. Anyway, there we go. Currency infused with souls that are otherwise identical to a normal coin can be used to trade with the merchant. And we also got relic fragments can be can be used to upgrade class fragments. Okay, so those are what relic fragments are. Okay, so that's good to know. Uh-huh. Okay, so we get fruit of life. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay, regain. Okay, so we can either regain our HP or we can either get more souls. I'm going to get more souls, in my opinion, because I think right now we're pretty good with the way that we're doing things. I don't think we really need to do too much here. All right, so collective move. Um, how do I actually... I, I, okay, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, so we can just basically move them all at the same time. Okay, so that's good. So if we go down here, there's the collective action. Okay, so that's actually working much better for us right now. Okay, what's going on here? That's a boss. Okay, hello. Yeah, I don't really want to go there. Thank you very much. But um, what is that? An altar of mana. Okay, well, that's going to be pretty good. Characters that offer a tribute will gain a blessing that grants special powers. Right, so I think I want the mage to actually get over here if at all possible. So I'm actually going to skip my turn right here. One hour is going to pass, which is perfectly fine. And then we can move once again. So let's do collective action. Let's go down here. Okay, so we can dedicate. Okay, so HP. When offering HP as a tribute, there's a chance to upgrade the altar's level. Only one character can offer a tribute. Right. Okay, can I actually... Wait a minute. I'd like to select the mage. There we go. Can we Can we do this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so we took five damage. Do I wish to use the altar? Used to boost magic attack. I mean, this is going to be so incredible for her. So I'm thinking we're going to do this once again. And then we'll use it. We gained one magic attack. I don't actually know how good that is. Um, we can actually view her character stats right now. Magic attack. Yeah, that's actually not even bad. That was pretty good because she has six but from a base. And now we've got plus one. So I think that's all right. And there's, there's, there's our item backpack and all that stuff. And then we have the character screen. We have the log book. And it tells us absolutely every single thing that we'd want to know. And tells us every kind of character and enemy that we're going to see. And all the biomes, all the relics. And look at all these all these relics. Oh, wow. There's a, there's a huge amount available that we haven't unlocked yet. Okay. So, is there anything that I can actually do? Can I cast spells outside of battle? Something tells me I don't think I can do that. But that's that's fine. I don't have a big problem with that. Okay, so let's do collective action once again. And we're just going to be moving into the boss area. I don't think there's anything else, anywhere else where we can go. No, it doesn't seem like it. So we're just going to be heading into the boss. Let's start the boss battle. Okay, I'm actually very nervous about this. Because I've obviously taken some damage from the, the altar. And, uh, well, uh, this might not go too well. As you can see, the goblins are actually getting to attack immediately, which is really, really harsh, in my opinion. Uh, let's do... Okay, so let's do some stuff. 
So we can do flame, but ooh, that's going to be so nice. Okay, so technically, um, vulnerable increases damage taken by one. Okay, yeah, no, no. I think we're going to go for fireball here, and I'm going to use it on the blow piper in the back. I mean, how much can can this guy actually do? I don't even know how much this guy can actually do. But we're going to just try to kill the ad first. That's going to be the most important thing for us to do, and then we're going to be using blessing to heal our samurai there we go and he's also going to gain holy mark which increases damage dealt by five percent then healing is increased by one as well okay so this guy's just used harden which has now improved his armor by 15 which is actually pretty incredible kind of sad that we you know that he did that but you know that's just that's just how it is anyway um yeah that's what he has oh he gains five armor during during our turn as well that's his that's his trait I was actually wondering um, whether we could tell what he was going to do next. So I'm just going to defend. I'm going to continue defending here, just in case. And uh, we're going to do... Uh, hmm. I'm thinking we're probably just going to do another fireball, just to get this guy out of the way. And then we, uh, we obviously have enough BP, which is quite nice as well. So I'm thinking that maybe what we'll do is we could potentially just use Holy Shield right here. What does Holy Shield do? Reduces the next one damage from normal attacks or skills to one. Whoa, okay, that's really, really strong, actually. Technically, we could heal again. I think I will heal my Samurai again back up to full HP. Sounds pretty good. This guy's literally just reinforcing all the time. Yeah, yeah, it seems like he's literally just being defensive, which, in my opinion, is actually pretty good for us because now we can do Slashing Strike or we could do Selfless Charge. You gain six plus 150% armor and consume all armor to deal two times eight damage to a single target. In other words, if I'd taken that relic at the very beginning that actually made it so that we wouldn't lose our armor every single turn, this would have been amazing. But as it stands, I will use Slashing Strike here. That's going to deal massive damage. Unfortunately, still dealing basically zero, but, you know, that's just how it goes. And otherwise, we'll just do a nice little, nice little fireball right here. Just get a nice little burn going on. And then we can potentially do an attack or we can heal. I think I will probably just heal someone. Let's just heal the mage. There we go. That seems pretty decent. Whoa, that's a lot of damage. All right, that is a lot of damage from the boss right there. Okay, I have a bad feeling about this, to be honest. I have a very bad feeling. Okay, uh, I guess I'm just going to do Slashing Strike once again. I mean, this is going to do big damage, but it's obviously not enough. I mean, really, it is, it is purely not enough. Okay, so let's do... Oh, I should, have done, I should have done Flame Burst, actually. That would have made much more sense. Oh, well, never mind. Hey, oh, look at this, look at this. He's almost dead. Okay, we just need to heal. Uh, heal, the, uh, heal the priest. Hopefully, he's not going to do enough damage. Oh, he's doing hard on again. Okay, Whew. I was a bit worried there for a second. I can tell you. Oh my, okay, I was really, really worried. Okay, so, yeah. So, I think personally, we can basically just keep attacking with the samurai here. I don't think we need to worry too much about that. He does only have 14 HP remaining, but uh, yeah, we can't really do much about that. We could obviously defend. Technically, we could defend. I think I will defend with our other characters here. I'm going to heal once again with the priest heal the priest back up this guy is obviously gonna he's not going to attack i'm really surprised that he's not going to attack actually i would have expected him to do that almost immediately but yeah anyway we're just going to do this and then the mage is going to finish him off really really easily with a nice little flame burst right here 23 damage boom he's out of there all right there we go we got 68 souls very nice i'm kind of feeling a little bit more confident but uh, let's see what happens in between the biomes because i'm a bit worried about how much hp we're going to gain can be embedded at the merchant to obtain the meditate skill right okay okay so we have flare here no no we're gonna we're gonna regenerate all our characters now or try to regenerate them as much as possible and now we can choose a relic okay so restore three um mana when you kill an enemy pretty good uh, deal 15 penetrating damage to all enemies every 5 normal attacks. Okay, well, that's pretty good. But obviously, if you think about how much HP enemies have, it might not be that useful unless you're just doing normal attacks all the time, which I'm not really. Uh, maybe if I had the archer instead of the mage, that's what I would do. 
Uh, reduce damage taken by one when you have no armor. I'm actually going to be taking the star tier, I think. The star tier is going to be so incredibly powerful for us. Oh, there we go. We actually heal ourselves all to full by the looks of things. I think that actually happens um, when we complete a level, potentially. I'm not entirely sure, but now we have gone into the next level of the settlement of goblins so not the next biome but the next level of it okay so that's good to know anyway let's move all of our people up here all of our people here 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 i'm just going to try and walk around a little bit and and this is the point you see how large this actually is this is an extremely large level in comparison to what was you know what we were encountering before so oh oh really there's, okay there's two, there's two of them here okay let's do this all right, what do we have? What do we have? What's that? It's a goblin mage. And this guy's obviously poisoning our people almost immediately. That's irritating, isn't it? Ah, that is very irritating indeed. Okay, so technically, um, yeah, they all have different mana values. So we can theoretically literally just go straight up here. 13 damage, pretty nice. The mage is going to be able to... Yeah, the goblin mage doesn't seem to do too much. So I think I can literally just go and attack the blowpiper we're going to get three mana back as well thanks to our new relic which is amazing in my opinion and we can also do holy light that doesn't really help me that much at the moment to be honest so i think what i'm actually gonna do i could heal the mage or i could just attack i think i will just attack i don't see a reason to actually heal yet we have 2 BP. Um, I don't think I want to do anything else, actually. 16 damage. No, I think I'm just going to attack normally here. Because the mage is going to be using BP in a second. Yeah, look at this. The mage really doesn't have that much power at all. I think we're going to be absolutely fine. Flame Burst is going to finish this guy off super, super easily. All right, so we're learning. We're learning. We're getting things dead pretty quickly now, actually. Kind of nice. And we can now regenerate our characters once again which is what i will do want to try and regenerate our people as much as we can aha here we go upgrade your class relics by clicking on their icons when you've gathered gathered enough relic fragments aha so in other words i can upgrade the guardian pauldrons so when the priest uses no attack and a damaging skill all your characters gain one attack and magic attack and reduce damage taken by one so that's really really good i'm going to upgrade this boom there we go. So that's upgraded to tier 2 now. And wow, look at how much better this is now. So in other words, if I just defend with the priest every single turn, if I'm not healing, it's going to be so much better. It is going to be so good. It really is. Okay, so let's just move. Uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. We need to... Can I not actually target the samurai? No, I cannot target the samurai. I'm actually wondering whether I should even... Should I even move? Uh, hmm. There's... Oh, there's a merchant. Hello. Okay, yeah. We're going to go down to the merchant, I guess. Um, yeah, unfortunately, we... Oh, better defeat the boss as soon as possible. Oh, now I'm worried. Okay, well, let's just move down here. Going to leave that guy there. We're going to go into the merchant. Going to speak to him. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. I, 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 don't mind, I don't mind trading with him right now. I think we've got a pretty decent amount of souls. Or maybe we don't. I don't know. Uh, yeah, so we can sell skill stones. I don't actually have any of those at the moment. So we're just going to buy some skill stones. Oh, wow. Okay. Never mind. Relics are extremely powerful or expensive. Uh, either one. I mean, look at this. Dark armor is really good. At the beginning of the turn, gain two armor. That's really nice. Your character deals 25% extra damage when moving as the first character during a turn. That's really good for the samurai i suppose otherwise we do have the ability to get skill stones as well dispel all debuffs from the target that could actually be really really useful for the uh for the priest um but there's a bunch of other things here as well like for example look at this deal 80 percent physical damage to all enemies you can actually customize your characters quite significantly by the looks of things too restore 2 bp that's actually going to be incredible too although it does take mp to do that 100% chance to apply two stacks of power to yourself. I'm going to assume that power, yeah, increases your damage, physical attack, and the defense. Aha, aha. Okay, yeah. Well, we also have class relics here as well. Unfortunately, I don't have enough to be able to get any of those. I need 25 of these to be able to do that. All right, I'm actually just going to be 
uh, I think just going to be exiting. I do have Meditate here, actually. Hmm. I'm thinking this might actually be really useful. Yeah, I think this might actually be really useful. I think I'm going to do this uh, for the... Can I, can I actually do that? Yeah. For the Samurai. So we're going to learn that skill. Does it not cost anything? It doesn't cost anything. That's really interesting. Okay. That is that is super interesting. I actually thought that that was going to cost something easily. But um, no, apparently it doesn't. Oh, I actually went in there. Oh, okay. Yeah, no, that's absolutely fine. I always, get a sh I always get a fright when one of my characters goes into the battle area and my others do not follow. I always get a huge fright from that because I think to myself, oh no, my priest has just gone in there by herself. That's terrible. Uh, yeah, well, whatever the case. Okay. Let me see what I can do here. Okay, so let's just attack, I guess. I mean, really, what else is there to do? So let's just attack him. And we're just going to try and get BP as much as we can. Just going to attack normally here. I'm going to heal with the priest. Uh, I need to make sure I'm doing the right thing here. There we go. And this guy's probably going to do some pretty decent damage, unfortunately. Oh, actually not. Just a normal attack. Doesn't really do much. Okay, I'm very, very pleased about that. Now, look at how much damage we're doing. We do two more damage just purely for the fact that the priest didn't do anything. The priest just healed. So that really makes a huge difference. Okay, so normal attack right there. And then we're just going to go for BP. And we'll go for Flame Burst. And that is a kill. Oh, yes. Nice and easy. Nice and easy. Bear in mind, if we also use Flame Burst, it does provide us with two stacks of burn instead of just one. So that's really nice. Increases the time allotted within the dungeon by one. That could be really useful. But I'm just going to take the Fruit of Life at the moment. Bear in mind, you do need to be quite quick about searching for the elite monster, or at least the elite monster that we have right now. Okay, so we're just going to be moving both of these characters in here, and then we're just going to move them all together. Uh, yeah, I, I've i gone everywhere so far, I think. Yeah, I've gone everywhere so far. So how, how long do I actually have? I have nine hours. So in other words, I have nine turns before we expire. Okay, that's good to know. Right, so I can... I don't think I can actually go in here with everyone. Is that true? Or maybe I can. Yes, I can. Okay, phew. Okay, I'm just learning how the movement system works as well. Because obviously I'm not entirely sure whether I can do certain things. Like for example, if my other characters don't have any movement points, am I still allowed to go in with one character? And then if I do you know, group move, basically, does that allow me to move them all into combat at once? And yes, apparently it does. So that's actually really nice. Anyway, uh, yeah, we're just going to attack normally here. I don't see a point not to do that. And we're going to be attacking with fireball. Wow, that, that was a lot of damage. And the priest is just going to defend. We don't have any MP with the priest, unfortunately, which is kind of bad. But um, yeah, well, uh, I think we have enough for one more one more heal or something like that. Uh, but yeah, we can actually just use Slashing Strike. Just kill him. I actually don't think... BP doesn't get carried over, right? It doesn't get carried over to the next battle, right? Am I, am I, am I correct in thinking that? Because if it does, that would be amazing. I'm uh, going to regain some mana here. I think that's going to be really useful for us. And we're actually just going to move one last little bit over here. There's an event going on here. All right, so let's move on. There we go. Okay, what is the event? While exploring, you suddenly felt lightheaded. Your knees gave away as you knelt on the floor, almost like someone was pressing down on you. As the world spun around you, what was once a wall beside you shone a bright light on your face. You look at the source, and there it was, a stern-looking goblin statue. Salute or attack. Salute. Max HP gain. Okay. As a challenger to the dungeon, you saluted at the statue in respect. Had the goblin been alive, they would likely have been a fight to the death between the two of you. Suddenly, the invisible pressure washed over you again. The overwhelming force pushed you on one knee. After a few seconds, the pressure disappeared. You stood up and look at the still statue in awe and quickly left the room. Alright. Oh no, he lost ten... What? 
He gained 5 max HP, but he lost... Ah, wait a minute. So he lost 10 HP, but he gained max HP. All right, I understand. Okay, that's actually fine. I don't mind that. I think that's pretty good. Okay, so yeah. So we just basically went all the way around there. Oh, there's a campfire? Oh, wow, I had no idea. Yeah, let's, um, let's just have everyone have a rest. I really need some MP with the priest. I'm perfectly happy for the, the hour to pass. I don't really have a problem with that. And uh, let's just have everyone move. There we go. And there's the final boss. Okay, that's great. This is the elite monster. So um, I don't think it is actually a boss, but just an elite monster, kind of similar to what it was before, potentially. I'm not entirely sure, but I think I have um, explored everywhere, as you can see. So we're just going to go straight on in. And I'm going to try to uh, use the priest as little as possible. Oh, two mages? Oh, okay. That's actually super, super simple. Or it should be super simple for us. I don't think this is going to be too bad. Now we have meditate available as well. So if the samurai takes a huge amount of damage, I should have no problems whatsoever in uh, dealing with that. So uh, yeah, we'll just try to... I think we're going to try and eliminate the mutant first. Because for me personally, I think the... The mages are not really going to do too much. As you can see, they, they don't really do much damage. They, I mean, they do they do damage, obviously, but they, you know the damage that they do is very minimal, in my opinion. Okay, so we're just going to heal. Just going to heal the mage. And obviously, healing the mage also increases her damage as well, which is going to be really, really useful as we go forward. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna we're just gonna eliminate this guy. I think uh, I do have two BP, but I'd like to one shot one of the other opponents if at all possible. So we're just gonna hopefully have the burn eliminate this mutant right here. He is gonna attack twice more, which is kind of unfortunate. But I, I kind of want to use flame burst on one of these guys because, as you can see, they're literally just gonna die straight up. You know, like literally. Look at the burn. The burn is just incredible right there. And we're just gonna heal once more with the priest. There we go, just heal the mage. Seems like these mages really want to kill our mage. I mean, I guess they're just jealous. They're just jealous that she has a wonderful outfit on. That's probably what it is. Anyway, uh, yeah, we can just... Well, we can just go straight up and attack the, the last goblin mage right here. And I can just do a little bit of a fireball and eliminate him instantly. And the other two are going to die. Boom. Both dead from... Uh, well, they should, be, they should be dead in a second. I'm actually just going to attack here with the priest because... That gains us back a little bit of MP with with uh, with the priest, so that's actually going to be really nice. Anyway, 66 souls, four relic fragments. That was easy enough, actually. A very surprising victory there. Anyway, rewards 20 extra souls. Used to reveal the boss's location. Generally, I could use this. Might be kind of useful. Maybe we want. Maybe we want to do that. Yeah, why not? All right, now we can choose a relic as well. All right, so we have the uh, the quill once again. Uh, as I've said to you before, I'm not sure how good this actually is. Uh, however, grappling vines, I mean, this is absolutely amazing if you're able to generate more armor. But at the moment, my samurai doesn't really have the ability to do that. Each critical hit heals for 2 HP. Also, critical hit. Oof. When am I criticaling? I don't know. I could obviously refresh. I think I will refresh and see if I can get something a little bit better. Normal attacks deal extra damage equal to two times the number of burn. Okay, that could be kind of useful. Enemies prioritize attacking targets with higher armor. Oh, that's perfect. All right, yeah, we're going to be taking that because that if that actually draws opponents to attack my samurai in comparison to attacking the mage, that's just going to benefit us in the long run. That's going to be so incredibly useful. Okay, so we have a battle almost immediately here. We've got max HP being gained as well, which is always nice. I need 24 Relic Fragments to be able to upgrade the Priest's shoulder piece. But otherwise, that's absolutely fine. Let's move on in here, and this is going to be a super easy victory, or it should be a super easy victory. My, my characters feel pretty strong right now. I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, unfortunately, the Priest is getting murdered, as you might expect. But, you know, that's how it goes. All right. Um, yeah, I, I guess we'll just do a little bit of a fireball here. And the priest can actually just murder straight up. But I think I'm actually just going to heal instead. This guy hopefully won't do anything too damaging to us. 
yeah, he just attacked the samurai. That's absolutely perfect. Okay, so we're just going to defend here with the samurai. Oh, <laughs> oh, I forgot about that relic. Oh, never mind. Okay, I actually didn't want to do that. I wanted to get the mage the kill so that we'd get more MP, but oh well doesn't really matter too much. I think I might like to regenerate MP here because the Samurai is the only one that took damage. So regenerating MP is definitely going to be the only option for us right now. And otherwise we can move our people over here. And then we can do, what is that? Oh, that, oh there's an altar of mana. That could be really useful. I actually want to just have a look at our mage. Yeah, the mage still has the magic attack buff from the altar of mana that we had before so i'm actually wanting to move her in here technically we could also do a little bit of sacrificing yeah let's do two sacrifices um, yeah that was fantastic okay that's really really good as you can see that was super super damaging Okay, uh, well, I mean, it's going to be super damaging to our opponents, at least. Okay, so let's move in here. This is going to be a nice, nice victory. What do you bet? I can't even imagine what it's going to be like. Yeah, it seems like BP is actually saved. Is that right? If BP is actually saved, then I've been making huge errors by using it at the end of the fight. But, uh, well, never mind. Anyway, let's just do defend. And uh, we're just going to use fireball. It's going to deal 15 damage literally look at that 15 damage that's that's pretty incredible okay so we'll just defend with the priest right here okay i'm going to test this out actually because i'm kind of interested to see exactly what happens with our bp so i'm not going to use bp to finish off the fight i'm basically just gonna you know finish it off normally and then we're going to go into the next fight and we'll see how much bp we actually have oh look at this max action points for all party members within the next hour so mm, I'm not a big fan of that, actually, all things considered. So I'm just going to be healing myself for five. I think that's much better. All right. So now we can continue onward. What is that? Spend souls to increase your various attributes. There's the merchant. All right. Okay. Hello. Uh, there's a lot of different places that I want to go to right now. Oh, dear. Okay, let's go over here and see what's going on with this. Do you wish to use the stone wishing pool? It will be exhausted after use. Yes, let's use it. Okay, all your characters gain 3 max HP, all your characters gain 2 max HP. Otherwise, we have a bunch of other things here, but they are way too expensive for me right now. So I'm going to be going for 2 max HP. I mean, MP even. I don't really need the HP as such. So I'm pretty happy with what we have there. All right, so let's just move the priest back here. And then it's going to go forward one hour. All right, uh, okay, so I'm going to move the samurai over here because I'd like to explore. Ah, there's some treasure. Perfect. 127 souls, okay, and five relic fragments. Whoa, okay. And a relic? Whoa, okay, we're getting really lucky. Okay, so now what do we want to do? Each critical hit heals us, I guess. I could refresh, but I only have one more refresh available. I guess I'm going to refresh and see what I get. Skill usage during the first turn costs no mana points. What? Are you serious? Yes, I will take that. That is amazing. Okay, yeah, we're otherwise just going to be moving forward here. Okay, nothing much. Nothing much going on there. All right, so we can move on. There's a campfire. Technically, we can rest. It's kind of pointless, though. So, yeah, we've actually uncovered everything, and... The priest is the only one that can move. So I'm actually just going to skip the turn. Yeah, I'm just going to skip the turn. All right. So um, I, I think I'm actually traveling a bit too slowly. So I think I need to do something about that. So I'm, I'm not sure if I can really take the time. Oh, there's the boss. Okay. Okay. Um, that's not too bad then, I guess. I was a bit worried about it because I thought to myself, if I run over there because there's the merchant and there's a bunch of other rooms but that's going to take me a long time i'm probably going to get down to like the three hour mark or something like that and i don't really want to do that so we're just going to go straight on into the boss battle okay what do we have a night demon a night demon all right it's got rev okay wait a minute wait a minute it's got revenge double dip boss what does that actually mean i don't know what any of those things mean i guess we're gonna have a look see here 
Add one stack of power each time a friendly unit dies. Okay, so in other words, we've got to focus on the big boss. Otherwise, the adds next to him are going to just absolutely murder us really, really easily. I mean, if we kill the adds, then the boss is going to be so super powerful. And the character can move twice per turn. Oh, no. Are you serious? Okay, yeah, that's really, really strong. Okay, well, apart from that, this is a good time to actually use... I'd like to use Meditate, actually. Can I actually heal other people? No, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use meditate right now. Okay, so let's just use fireball right here, and I can use another skill here. Just gonna heal myself. There we go. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna hopefully have BP too. Hopefully, I'm gonna have two BP. So yeah, uh, uh, the BP does not get transferred over, as you can see. You just start with one BP in each in each battle, by the looks of things. So that's really good to know. And yeah, this guy's got lifesteal as well. That's really harsh. Okay, so we're just going to continue attacking him. And then the mage is just going to tear him apart with flame burst. Boom, he's dead. <laughs> All right, yeah, that, that's exactly what I'm talking about. That's the kind of thing I want to see. Okay, so yeah, we're just going to be healing the priest once again. As you see, the priest with the pauldrons being able to give us uh, two attack every single turn by the way to attack and to magic attack every single turn makes a huge difference to our overall killing potential and we're just going to use some uh some some normal attacks now some normal mp using attacks and uh, we're just going to attack both of these and technically i could use holy light now to actually deal some damage too which might actually make sense i think i will do that boom there we go just eliminate that guy we're not going to get any buffs as a result of that, but that's absolutely fine because we're going to gain heals and max HP and all that wonderful stuff after the battle is over anyway. We're just going to use Slashing Strike, finish him off, and he's done. He's out of there. All right, so yeah, basically just focusing on the boss in this case was certainly the right way to go. Very pleased that we made the right decision there. And there we go. We actually got Revive. Can be embedded at the Merchant to obtain the Revive skill. Okay, and we also got some additional souls, HP, uh, plus max, eight. yeah, maybe this would be good. So we can move to an extra room. Yeah, we're going to take extra AP here. Okay, what else do we have? Ooh, the whetstone might be cool. Each critical hit applies one power to all your characters. Each stack of burn deals one extra damage. No, I'm going to take the igneous stone. The igneous stone is amazing. Yes, if we can continue using flame burst especially on high HP targets, we're going to see some incredible gains right there. Anyway, look at that. We've got some additional attack as well, an additional magic attack too, because we are a, a full full party. We're still a full party, so I'm actually really pleased about that. There is a battle going on here, but the battle is, well, probably relatively negligible because it doesn't allow us to go anywhere, so I'm probably not going to be going there at the moment. doesn't seem like a good idea. All right, so I'm going to assume that the boss... There's the campfire. Hmm. I'm going to assume that the boss is somewhere down here. Could be wrong. No, there it is. <laughs> okay, I was actually right. Wow, okay, who would have thought that? Okay, so I think I'm actually just going to go straight on into the boss. We only have five hours. So let's just go straight on in here. I feel pretty strong right now. But maybe I shouldn't have. Oh, dear. Well, this is problematic, isn't it? Yes, this is very problematic indeed, but we're not damaged at all, so I suppose that's pretty good. Okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. I need to have a look and see what these guys do. Encourage grants 25% bonus attack to all friendly targets while on the field. In other words, I need to kill this thing really, really quickly. The Colossus Rider we already know about, but what does the Ogre do? Character can move twice per turn. Right, that's going to absolutely destroy us. So I'm thinking we're going to have to kill this totem really fast, really quickly. So I'm going to try and use Fireball and everything else that I can. The Priest is going to have to do something to uh, just gain us some defenses and some more attack and so on. This is not that bad. And this guy is going to do a lot of defensive actions as well. So I actually don't think that that's too bad. Oh, the Totem silenced. Mm, that is real bad, actually. That is really, really awful. That means the mage cannot use her spells any further. Okay, yeah, that's going to be really harsh for us right now. Okay, hmm. I guess I'm just going to go and attack 
the totem. The totem is going to die next turn. I guess, I, I mean, I, I, sh I guess I should just finish it off, shouldn't I? Yeah, I should just finish it off. It was going to die next turn anyway due to our burn, but I want to make sure. And we're just going to defend with the priest once again. Okay, I'm pretty happy about this now because the totem is, is dead. We don't have to worry about the totem any further, so I'm actually pretty happy with this. And this situation shouldn't go too badly. I'm going to defend with the samurai now. And we're just going to do a nice little flame burst on the ogre, I think. Yeah, I mean, look at that damage. That damage is incredible. And we're going to be doing four damage every single turn to the ogre now, which is incredible. Really, really nice. And we're going to be healing the mage. There we go. And we're going to be continuing to buff ourselves as well. Do bear that in mind. Okay, yeah. That's, that's a bit problematic, isn't it? Oh, dear. Okay, this guy is going to be really harsh for us. Okay, if they do have a single target attack, what I want them to do is focus on the samurai. So that's the reason why I'm actually trying to make it so that he defends every single turn. Because obviously we have that relic that prioritizes attacking targets with higher armor. So if they have higher armor, then hopefully that's going to work. I'm not sure if that works against the Colossus Rider, to be honest. Because as you can see, he's got 40 armor. So I don't know what the the text description actually implies it could be that that's not the case it could be that you need to have higher armor than the opponent but i'm thinking that maybe if the only person that has armor in my team that's maybe the person that we want to have be attacked that's my thinking on it at least hopefully that's how it works don't know whether it is yeah there's a single target attack that's really really harsh okay uh can we actually use meditate on the mage no it is a single target heal okay that's good to know right i guess i will just try my best to deal damage we need to heal there we go okay hopefully it's not going to do that big aoe attack no it's just it's just uh, it's fine it's just buffing itself that's that's absolutely fine i have no problem with that whatsoever we're just going to continue defending here with a samurai and then we'll just do a nice little Nice little flame burst. Look at that, 37 damage. All of its block is now gone, which is absolutely perfect. And we can continue to heal ourselves as well, technically. So I'm going to actually heal the priest now. He's going to do... Yeah, I thought... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew what you were doing. I knew what he was doing. <laughs> he was literally thinking to himself, yeah, I'm going to attack the priest. The priest seems to be healing. That's terrible. All right, yeah, well, whatever the case, we're just going to attack the samurai now, and we're just going to go for a nice little fireball there. And four burn damage. I, I think I'm still going to just heal. Yeah, that was a good choice. And he's basically dead. He is very dead. Okay. That's it. And we killed the boss. We killed the boss straight away on the first turn, basically. Well, not... Well, kind of the first turn, I guess. I, you know, if you can kind of think that. Anyway, uh, we can actually heal ourselves if we want to. Um... Yeah, I, I guess I'm going to take that, actually, because that is a backpack thing. So that goes into our inventory, and then we'll be able to use that. Uh, normal attacks deal extra damage equal to two times the number of burn. This is actually going to be super, super powerful now, because we have the ability to stack burn just that much quicker. Enemies affected by vulnerable have a 20% chance to deal one damage. That's actually super useful, too. So if you're using your mage as a debuffer and not as a burn stacker, then you can actually get the ruby pendant instead. But I'm going to take flame arrow. I think that that is going to be extremely useful for us. And we're now going to go on to the next level or the next biome. There we go. We're getting some defense this time. And now this is the floor boss. Okay, so... The floor boss is available. Um, where, where, um, where, where would that be? Where would that be? There's the altar of speed. Okay, well, I have, um, I have the inventory right here. So there's revive. Obviously, I can use that if I want to. Where are my special, special things that I can use? There. Here we go. So I can now just use the dangerous compass, and that's going to show me where the boss is. So you can see here, that is where the boss is. And I can do whatever I want to do. Otherwise, we can go anywhere we want. So I can go to the campfire over there. It's actually really nicer than that they've placed a campfire right before the boss. There is also a merchant over here. So I think what we're going to do is we're very quickly just going to go down to the merchant. 
gonna see what he has for us maybe he has something amazing maybe there's like a really good relic or something like that i mean look at this we got this reduces damage taken by one when you have no armor that's actually really useful follow-up attacks become penetrated follow-up attacks deal two extra damage to the target i don't think i have any follow-up attacks because i don't think i have the archer so that's probably the reason why um we could also take the strength crystal physical attack plus one defense restore to bp actually that sounds super fun gonna get this additionally incurs two follow-up attacks dealing three magical damage hmm hmm i see i see so the silver ring with the pursuing shot would have been amazing but i'm not going to do that obviously so magical sharing could also be a, a really really good thing to take as well because restoring ma mana to your to your teammates that's going to be really nice but i'm thinking what we're going to do i obviously can't do anything here unfortunately we don't have enough relics for that i have 21 technically if i'd done more um you know done done more exploring on the previous level then that would have been fine and i would have gained some more things but i'm actually going to buy this that's kind of useful in my opinion. And what we're going to do is I'm actually going to give focus to the mage. And you know what we're going to do with that, right? You know what we're going to do with that. That's going to be so incredibly easy for us. And revive, I don't actually know whether I even want to do revive. I don't see the point in this, actually. I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it really matters because I think it already has revive. The priest, doesn't, doesn't the priest already have revive? I don't actually know, but Whatever the case, we've now embedded ourselves with some wonderful skills. Don't have anything over here. At least I don't think so. Let me actually just check. There doesn't seem to be anything here, right? No. Okay, so I can actually just move back. And I will skip the turn. We know where the boss is, so we're pretty fine. You know, we're, we're, we're going to be moving... Probably over to the event, potentially. Let's move over here. Yeah, let's go over here to the event, and let's uh, let's see what this does. Oh, no. You followed the trail of, of putrid scent and fo found a room filled with a mixture of indescribable stench. You hid in a corner of the room and eavesdropped on the goblin's conversation. Ha <laughs> ha I don't know what to do, what to do. I'm getting so excited. The goblins chatted on, completely unaware of your presence. Continued observation. You decided to remain hidden for a while longer and spy on the goblins. They stirred forcefully as they added more exotic liquids to the mixture. The concoction slowly became a viscous purple liquid. The rancid mixture gave off a toxic cloud that permeated the air with an unbearable rotting smell. Continued observation. I have a bad feeling I'm going to take damage here. You hold on to your breath as you continue to listen. Despite your best efforts, you still inhaled a portion of the toxic gas. You suddenly noticed a red potion flask and an emerald green crystal within your arm's reach. Alright, so we can lose 3 MP or lose 5 HP. I'm going to be taking the crystal. What do we get? When picked up, all your characters gain 3 max HP. And the samurai lost 3 MP for that. Okay, that's actually perfectly fine. You quickly le leave the uh, deranged laboratory. Alright, that's... um. <laughs> That's actually pretty perfect for me. I'm I'm very happy with that um, <laughs> that result. I think that's super nice, actually. All right, so let's move on. What do we have here? We have a battle. Okay, well, that's perfectly fine as well. What do we have? Okay, difficulty two. This is going to be a much harder battle than what we're used to, but I'm happy to go... Wait a minute. Did I not, did I not go for it? I thought I pressed enter. Okay, apparently I didn't. Okay, well... Oh, what? This is a difficulty too. These guys are literally, uh, they have nothing. They have 11 HP. They're going to die almost instantly. Aren't they? That is super weird. All right. Uh, yeah, we're just going to attack straight away right there. Really easy. Okay. Uh, the priest can, well, yeah, I think we're just going to, just going to use fireball right here. Um, yeah, we'll just, we'll just eliminate the wolves real fast just to get them out the way. Priest can heal. And uh, yeah, the priest actually has the ability to revive out of combat, but not the ability to revive in combat. So me getting the embedding of the revive skill right there, that was actually a really good thing to do, at least uh, from what I can tell. So that's quite nice. Otherwise, there we go. We're just going to use our BP just to do some damage here. And our mage should be able to finish this guy off. 
with a little bit of fireball goodness. Yes, a little bit of fireball right there. Okay, so yeah, nothing else is really that useful for us right here. Maybe we want to get more MP. Yeah, let's get some more MP. Why not? I mean, we're going to go to a campfire anyway, so, um, you know, that's also going to be a thing. There we go. Uh, actually, wait a minute. Am I even going to the campfire? Where's the campfire? Oh, the campfire was over there. Okay, well, <laughs> apparently I am not going to the campfire. No, apparently I'm not going there. Okay, well, that's interesting. Okay, so let's just skip the turn with the priest. I need to make sure that I actually make it there in time. We've only got two hours remaining. So I'm a bit worried, but um, we're just going to move here. And there we go. All right, here we go. Ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do this. All right. Okay, so the new strategy, obviously... Whoa, this guy's massive. All right. <laughs> oh, he's got adds too. Okay, this is not good. Okay, the mage can be ignored. The blade slinger needs to die, in my opinion, pretty fast. Let's see what this guy actually has. Grants 25% bonus attack to all friendly targets while on the field. Will attack indiscriminately in, in an area under... Oh, under special circumstances. What does that mean? Okay. Well, that's going to be interesting. All right. Okay, so we want to use focus immediately. So I'm going to do that. There we go. And then we basically just want to defend. Yep, that was that was a good choice. That was a good choice. The priest would have taken massive damage otherwise, which would have been terrible. Okay, Goblin King raise their weapons. Prepare for a fight. All right, I am prepared. Let's do this. Okay, let me see now. Hmm, I could do Slashing Strike, which would do 21 damage. I don't think I really need to do that, but I could. Hmm, this might be useful to eliminate the mutant. Because the priest could eliminate the mutant with just a regular attack, potentially. The mage is going to use Flame Burst. So, let's do that as well. Flame Burst on this guy. 32 damage. Yeah, that's going to kill him almost instantly. The burn is actually going to take care of him, thanks to the igneous rock that we have. And the priest will now attack normally to kill the mutant. Gain back some MP in the same time. And the other guy is also dead. Okay, so he's obviously buffing everyone. The king is, is buffing everyone right now. What? He killed the he killed the goblin mage. Huh. Okay. Uh it was uh that well that was uh hmm, yes. I'm not entirely sure what to do now. I guess we'll just meditate a little bit with our samurai here, and then I will literally just do focus once again, gain back some BP. And we're gonna have to heal the Well, not the mage, that's for sure, but I'm gonna have to heal I, I guess not heal the mage. I'm gonna have to heal the priest. Okay, thankfully he's just doing random stuff now, which is pretty good. Summon minions. Oh, okay, I understand. Oh, I played this wrong. Yeah, I played this really, really wrong now. I realize that. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Hmm. Flame burst. We're going to have to attack the actual king. Because he's going to kill the goblins with his attack. You see, he's going to do that. So, um, wait a minute. Let me see. Can I use BP to actually do something really good here? 100% chance to gain one stack of evasion for a single target and consume all holy marks to heal for three times the... Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, okay. So I'm just going to heal normally here. Yeah, so he's going to charge... Okay, that was really close. Um, they're going to finish... They're going to finish off the mage now, aren't they? Yep. Oh, okay, yeah. I play as I say, I played that really, really badly, and I I'm not sure if I could be blamed for it. I think I could. Yeah, I think I could, but I was certainly not expecting him to kill all of his all of his people, although to be fair, I mean it said under special circumstances. So I was thinking, well <laughs> uh I, I didn't think that that was actually going to happen. Alright, well, the mage is dead. We can revive her. But that very much depends on if we can actually survive this in the first place. Okay, so there you go. As you can see, never mind. Okay, the priest is dead. 
the yeah this guy is this guy is way too strong for us unfortunately i'm gonna have to meditate once again i mean maybe my samurai can actually do it i highly doubt it but maybe he can i don't know i don't think so if we that's the funny thing if i'd gotten two flame bursts off with the mage which i would have been able to do by this point if she was still alive that is then uh, she, then the guy would be at like what 50, 50 HP, and he'd also have four burn stacks, which would really make a huge difference. But as it stands right now, no, I don't think I'm going to be able to achieve victory here, even if I do this, and even if I heal myself. Whoa, yeah, no, no. I mean, the, the fact that he is singularly attacking at the same time. Uh, if he only did this big attack, if he only did the big attack and actually killed all of his friends, then that would be fine. I think I would probably be able to um, sustain that kind of attack. But the fact that he does a single target attack as well as the big charge up, that's impossible for us to deal with in my opinion. As you can see, he, he actually does that... Um, he actually alternates. So he does... What does he do then? So he does like a normal... Uh, he does like a bunch of buffs, right? So he does a buff. Then he does an attack. Like a, a big charge-up attack. Oh no, he does a single target attack. So what he does is buff, single target attack, buff. Maybe another buff after that. And then he does the big AoE, kills his own people. And then he'll repeat that process again. So that is... That is the issue. That is the issue. He does too much damage with the single target, but obviously I didn't explore a little bit further. But as you can see, I only had two hours remaining, so I'm not sure. Anyway, well, well, if it isn't our great challenger, allow me to express my sympathy for your suffering. I'll be taking your soul now. Nothing shall be wasted. Well, well, what do we have here? And there we go. All right, so I actually didn't do, in my opinion at least, I didn't do too badly for my first ever run. And uh, I, I think, as I say, I'm not sure if I would have been able to do anything. Not sure if I would have been able to do anything against that. I think I might have been able to, but unfortunately, not this time around. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode. If you'd like to check out the game, there will be a link in the description. I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. <laughs>